In this video, we're looking at one of the simplest and most useful ways to use an op-amp, the voltage comparator. Here's the idea. We have two voltages, Vn, which changes over time, and a steady reference voltage. The question is, exactly when does Vn climb above that reference voltage? To find out, we need something that can compare the two. That's where a voltage comparator comes in. It sounds simple, but this little trick shows up everywhere. Need a low battery warning? Just build a comparator circuit. Set your reference voltage to the battery low threshold and compare it to the actual battery voltage. When the battery drops below that point, the comparator flips its output, turning on an LED, sounding an alarm, or even starting the charger automatically. The same principle runs temperature-controlled fans, light-activated switches, solar trackers, pulse generators, water level controllers, you name it. In every case, the job is the same. Take a signal from a sensor, compare it with a chosen reference voltage, and make something happen depending on which one is higher. That's all a comparator does, and it does it incredibly well. So how does an op amp work as a comparator? Before we go further, if you're completely new to op amps, I recommend watching our op amp introduction lesson first. I'll put the link in the description. For this example, we'll use an LM358, a dual op amp IC which runs on a single supply. Inside, there are two separate op amps. Pins 4 and 8 connect to the power supply, VCC and ground. Pins 1, 2, and 3 belong to the first op amp, while pins 5, 6, and 7 belong to the second. We only need one op amp for this demo, so we'll leave the other unused. Powering it is simple. Just connect pin 4 to ground and pin 8 to the positive supply. The LM358 works with anything from 3 volts up to 20 volts. Here's the pinout we care about. Pin 1 is the output. In my setup, it's driving a small light bulb, but you could use it to drive any suitable load. Pin 2 is the inverting input, where we'll feed in a fixed reference voltage. I'm using a simple voltage divider for that, and you can choose the resistor values to set whatever reference you want. Finally, pin 3 is the non-inverting input. This is where our signal comes in. It could be from a sensor or any voltage you want to compare against the reference. Here's how it behaves. If Vn is lower than the reference, the output is 0 volts and the light stays off. If Vn rises above the reference, the output jumps up to VCC and the light turns on. If we plot both inputs and the output, you'll see that whenever Vn, the non-inverting input, goes above the reference voltage, the output shoots high, but not quite to the full supply voltage. In the LM358, it stops about 1.2 volts below the positive rail. When Vn drops back below the reference, the output falls to 0 volts again. Now let's talk about the fundamentals of how op amps are used as comparators. Op amps are usually run in one of two main configurations, open loop or closed loop. In open loop mode, there's no feedback path from the output to the input. The gain's enormous, anywhere from 100,000 to over a million. That doesn't mean one volt magically produces millions of volts at the output. It means even a tiny input difference will push the output to the positive or negative supply limit. That's why open loop mode is mainly used for voltage comparators, where the only job is to detect which input is higher. Most of the time, though, op amps are used in closed loop mode, with negative feedback. Here, the output is fed back to one of the inputs, usually through a resistor network. Negative feedback tames the gain, keeps the circuit stable, and makes the op amp respond in a predictable linear way. Closed loop designs are used in all kinds of circuits. Inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, summing amps, difference amps, integrators, differentiators, you name it. Let's make this more concrete. Imagine an op amp with a gain of 200,000 powered by a plus minus 10 volt supply. The inverting input is fixed at zero volts and we vary the non-inverting input. Gain is simply the output voltage divided by the difference between the inputs. 
with a gain of 200,000 and VREF at zero, we can calculate the output for any small input change. If the non-inverting input is just 0.001 volts higher, the OT amp tries to output 200 volts on paper, but in reality, it quickly hits its limit at plus 10 volts. This is called saturation. The same happens in reverse. If the non-inverting input is slightly lower, the output dives to minus 10 volts. Instead of keeping the inverting input at ground, we can make it adjustable. Let's set it to plus 5 volts. Now, if we feed a sine wave into the non-inverting input, the output will switch between minus 10 volts and plus 10 volts each time the sine wave crosses that 5 volt level. The smooth wave going in becomes a crisp, clean square wave coming out. That's the beauty of a comparator. It takes a slow, gradual change and turns it into a sharp, decisive yes or no signal. So that's one of the most basic and most versatile ways to use an op amp, the voltage comparator. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. They really help keep us going. And if you enjoyed this, give it a like and subscribe for more curious science adventures.